and there we go we should be live hello everyone and welcome to our twitch stream latest episode july 26th 2026 2023 <laughs> 2026 i wish um so welcome everyone this is our last session on the CICD pipeline project, right? We've been working on it for uh, more than a couple of months, three months, maybe almost. Uh, we're finally at the point we've seen last time. We got our pipeline running. We made our configuration change. And like I was saying last time, this is just a final overview of the whole project today. That's what we're going to do. Go over... Um, see all the components, make sure that it still works. I've not touched this since last week, since we've done this. So uh, I'll just log back in into my GitLab's uh, community edition. We'll see the pipeline. I'll connect to my sandbox DMZ, right? My, my test environment will run a, one more time, one more change. We'll create uh, you know another loopback interface or we remove one. Uh, and uh, also wanted to give a, an option for folks if they have any questions, right, to ask them live. So I'm monitoring the chat at the same time. Um, if there is anything that comes to your mind, it's something that was not clear. Now is your chance to ask these questions. And that's what I mentioned also last week. So um, let's jump in. Let me connect first here. Uh, log in. I want to save it. We'll connect and I'm also connected with my Visual Studio Code. So a connection. Uh, and like we were, uh, we we're checking last time, right? We have all the components here. Um, and also I want to update the CICD Twitch folder with all the changes and I'm going to do a git push, right? Make sure that you folks have access to the same GitLab uh, repo in GitHub so that you can clone this, modify it as you see fit, build your own pipeline with what we've built together so far. Um, so let me sign in here. Uh, don't want to save it. Uh, let me put in my authentication code. Right, so we also have our CICD Twitch here. Um, we're gonna update this and make sure we have all the same content and it has the same folders, changes that we have in the CICD repo, which is the one that we have it running in our GitLab. All right, so going back here, let me see our project. So it's CICD. Um, come on, connecting to it, and then we'll see all pass runs, and it's a bit slow. Uh, sudo docker ps. both running both my runner and the GitLab community edition they're up and running the containers and okay there we go uh, while well, fetching folder content interesting 
Why? All right, refresh, fixed it. Okay, so host virus, we have this six days ago, PyTS six days ago, so that was last week. And then we have our CICD pipelines. We saw under here uh, several, well, a couple of successful runs. And then as we were bringing everything online, all the corrections that we've made, we have a nice historical overview of all these components and how they came together. All right, so we've added a loopback 100 last time, right? Uh, you've seen, if you haven't seen it, watch the recording. Um, we're just gonna add maybe like one more loopback today. But first, I wanna go ahead and, uh, not this. I wanna go ahead and um, make sure that the CICD Twitch, right, has the same changes as the CICD repo that we've worked on. So let me go and have a look at this first. And if I go here, CD to source, CICD Twitch, git status, Let's see where we are. We did some changes indeed. We have the test environment, YAML has been modified, the post trigger that I file, uh, the verify runners, and then there's a pre snapshots um, folder that's being created and then also post snapshots, right? So uh, let's just have a look at this as a final review. The image is right, the stages, the three stages, test environment.yaml, test environment.yaml, and we were missing the type here, right? For our iOS XC devices. So we have that now. That was one correction that needed to be done. Um, the trigger data file. It's not YAML here. That was another issue. Pre-trigger data file, making sure you specify the right extension. Uh, then pre snapshots, right? Then OSPF deploying with Ansible playbook, that's fine. And then uh, the post snapshot with PyTS. Uh, all right, so that's for the pipeline definition. And uh, let me see, can I compare here? Uh, terminal window to the window to right of screen. Oh, escape. Not necessarily what I wanted. Um, okay, so uh, we'll just go ahead and see post trigger data file. What did we have here? We changed it to, here the indentation was the issue, right? Uh, uh, that we had. Dentition looks good this time. Um, the host bars for both our hosts, the Google bars and XOS, it's correct. Um, that's fine. The configs, it's nothing. And then the actions would be the configure uh, 
OSPF. So hosts are the NXOS hosts, that's fine. That's the book config is correct. Hosts, uh, it was NXOS without the dash. That was another one. Uh, let me just check, yes. So NXOS hosts, 177, 178. The group VARs is correct. Cisco, Cisco. NXOS operating system. Um, this was fine. The creating environment, our Docker Compose was fine. Uh, configure SPF. It's correct now. And just let me see the indentation on this. I want to compare this to the pre-trigger data file from here. Pre-trigger data file from my CICD with pre-trigger data file. from my CICD repo, right? So I'm just want to make sure that indentation is correct. Um, this would be a tab here, a tab here. So let's fix indentation. device command include then verify advertised with SPF routes parallel parallels parse device command include contains device command include contains and then Pre snapshot or SPF indentation indentation for our YAML files, right? You want to make sure that they're indented correctly. Um, then parallel API device here. We need to give it a tab. And same thing here. All right, so let's save that. Now uh, our pre-trigger data file should be fine. It matches exactly, it's indented the correct way. And then let's do the same for the post-trigger data file. going to open this one first and the post trigger data file open to the side. All right, sources, test sections, parse, device, include. Uh, okay. So we see here, this needs to be indented, this, this, this and this. Same thing with our device here. Uh, parse. This is the command I want to run. Show IP route. Device tool. Contains that route. And then post snapshot OSPF. Actions, learn, device, feature, save as a variable. Learn, device, feature, save as a variable. And then parallel API, device, function, arguments, data, 
file name and then same thing with save dict json file here and then load snapshot Uh, value actions device function argument file name save and then API device function argument file name save all right so now it's in the correct way we have that fixed and that should have been it. Let's see what else we changed here to fix PyTS jobs, modify Ansible hosts, post trigger data file, add a post snapshot JSON files, uh, corrected indentation, that was it. Corrected indentation on pre trigger, merge branch, update. The GitLab CI uh, YAML file, uh, added Ansible config. Let's see here if we can see what happened. One addition. Oh, we had the export colon. Uh, let's see. And what about here? We have the export. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Okay. I think we got everything now. Um, so let me quickly see here. We've made all these changes, host vars, hosts, post trigger, pre snapshots, post snapshots, let's create the seed files. Would be post or SPF dist three zero one dot JSON. And then post switch zero two dot JSON. All right, so these are just seed files, empty. Uh, subsection data file, it's not much. Test environment should be good now. Yes, so I think we are good to do a git add everything. git commit and we'll do small corrections to hosts pre and post indentation files pyts And then if we do a git push, fail to push because remote contains work that you do not have locally. We want to first integrate the remote changes before pushing again. Um, fetch first. Okay, so let's see if we do a git pull. First. You have divergent branches. Uh, 
to specify how to reconcile them, you can do so by running one of the following commands sometime before your next poll. Um, so yeah, we've had this. You can replace git config global set the default preference. Uh, we're just gonna do a merge. And then a git push, let's see. Okay, git pull. Merge branch main. Please enter a commit message to explain why this merge is necessary. Um, oh, that's fine. Let me just see. Uh, and yes, our changes are still there. Okay, so now git status. Our branch is ahead of our by two commits. Yes, so we'll do a git push. All right, so let's see now if this is reflected here, and it is. Export is correct now, YAML is correct here. Um, indentation under PyDS should be fine. Yes. Pre trigger data file. Yes. So indentation is now correct. Uh, all right. So that looks much better. And I'll just let me update also the README on here. And we'll just add this repo contains all the necessary components. GitLab CE installation in a Docker contain it together with the honor process docker file for a docker image with ansible and pyts Profile. We have the GitLab together with the running process. We have Dockerfile, uh, Ansible playbook to configure OSPF on Cisco NXOS, all the components to implement a CI CD pipeline for infrastructure automation for a full overview. Check out the video recordings on Twitch TV slash Cisco DevNet. So we've recorded all the videos. You can watch all the videos on how we've set this all up. Um, 
Okay, so let me save that. Git status now. Git add. Git commit. Updated readme. md. Git push. And we should have the readme here. Perfect. And let's make sure the link works. And it should. And there we go. It's actually the recording that we're running right now. So it's working. Perfect. Um, all right, so we kind of have everything in place, right? CICD dash Twitch on AI DevNet. You can find the repo in here. Um, check it out, clone it, modify it as you see fit. Um, and let's go back to the pipeline quick. And we'll do just one more change. We'll create another Lubeck interface, make sure that it still works. But before I do that, I'm just gonna connect to my DMZ 120. And make sure that our environment is still running. Test environment and 10, 10, 10, 33. CML. Probably going to do a session also on CML and CML API. Um, part of our Twitch streaming here. Uh, since we're done with the CSD pipeline, I was telling you that we're going to have guests. So next, I plan on having a guest. So next week, be on the lookout. We'll have, we'll start having a list of guests that I'm just going to have casual conversations with, see what they're working on, projects, where you can find their work on GitHub, stuff like that. So that's coming up starting next week because we'll wrap up the CSD pipeline today. Um, and possibly I'll do a CML stream also on just having a look at the API, right? I've briefly mentioned it previously, but we didn't really have a look at the Python kind of like SDK that they have with CML. You can basically spin up all your simulation environment lab setup programmatically, right? So you can instantiate through the API that CML exposes your own um, simulation with all the devices, with configs programmatically. So you can have it integrated as part of your pipeline to bring up this environment dynamically, right? We've had it running, CML here is always running in the background, uh, turning around, but it doesn't need to be the case, right? You could, as part of your pipeline, instantiate your CML, your test environment, as part of the pipeline is one of the stages, right? So the for, for example, the first stage would be instantiate test environment. So there you go, you run your, could be a Python script, could be an Ansible playbook, could be a Terraform um, list that goes through and instantiates and starts um, your CML environment. So we'll have a look at that. I'm planning on doing that further down the road, just showing you a bit of CML um, and the programmable interfaces and that it provides and how you can actually Kind of integrate this as part of your pipeline like i was saying so for us now the simulation is on uh we have our four devices right they're running um, and let's go ahead and uh, create one more loopback interface um as using our pipeline 
Uh, so let me go back here. We're done with this. We're done with this, this, and this. Uh, we're done with CICD Twitch. And let's go ahead and have a look at our host bars. And we have that Lubeck 100. Let me just show you one more time how easy it is to test a new interface for OSPF. And then you can have, you could have actions. We've had it only for OSPF, right? So under actions here, I have configure SPF. You could have configure BGP, you could have configure EIGRP, you can have configure the whole switch, right? So you could have a, an Ansible playbook configuring everything on a switch. So then you can just run it or modify. You can have complete configurations. I just show you the configure SPF here. So let's go 101, um, save this, and then also go and do a little back 100 also on our second switch. Pull back 101, 101.2. And then also I want to check under PyTS my post trigger data file. I want to check for 101. And this is a nice, the power of PyTS, right? Because you could check routes that have been actually advertised. You can check operational data. Right, because with Ansible, you do your configuration, right? You push it. Okay, configuration was applied successfully on both devices. But were the routes actually learned between? Were the routes propagated through your infrastructure? Is the routing table up to date? Ansible is not really going to tell you that, right? It's just going to tell you that yeah, the change has been successfully implemented. Fine, done. But Did the change actually get the desired outcome that you wanted it to, to accomplish? And with PyTS, you can check that, right? That's the nice thing. Operational data, you can check routes. You can check everything uh, that you want as part of your pipeline and as part of your change management system. All right, so let's go. And look here at a git status and we see we have the new loopback 101 so if i do a git add everything i get commit message added loopback 101 for ospf and then uh, git push be developer That's it, right? You perform your change. You did a git push and that triggered the whole pipeline. If we go now under pipelines, there we go. We have it specifically running at the loop back 101 for OSPF, right? So we'll just let it run and have a look. I'm able to fetch data for this pipeline, why? Uh, there we go, pre-snapshot, usual run of the pipeline. Uh, let me quickly check, are there any questions? From anyone uh, in the chat? Hello, folks. Welcome to our last CICD pipeline for infrastructure automation. Hi, 
Hi, DDS69. Uh, welcome to our last 65 hours of information stream. Twitch stream. Let me know if you have any questions. So job succeeded. It took a snapshot, right? As part of the first stage, let's see second stage. Is running now, so that's the Ansible stage. So you'll see it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of heavy lifting as you set this up, but once you have it set up, right? It's so nice to perform changes and just have everything work seamlessly. It's a bit, yes, it's going to take you a bit of time to set this up, but once you have it set up, it's just amazing, right? It really improves. So deploying with SPF is done. Let's see. Glad to be able to provide your networking content, DDS69, on Twitch. Yes, so there'll be more coming. And by the way, we're going to start using Restream uh, starting next week with my interviews. Right, and having folks come over. So Restream, we're going to stream to YouTube, Twitter, or X, whatever they call it now. Right, we'll still <laughs> stream on that. Uh, and LinkedIn. Right, so we'll have the stream going at the same time over all these platforms. And the recording of that will be uploaded to Twitch after that because there's some terms of service conditions that have changed for Twitch. And it seems they don't allow streaming at the same time. Anyway, long story short is we're going to start using Restream. Stream on all other platforms but Twitch at the same time starting next week and then we'll upload the recording to Twitch after the fact so following if you want to join me next week Wednesday 9 a.m pacific time same time uh, then make sure I'll also send a message on LinkedIn right advertising here this is where you can find this on the Cisco DevNet YouTube channel, on our LinkedIn, on Cisco DevNet on LinkedIn, and then also Cisco DevNet on Twitter slash X slash whatever is going to be called next. Who knows? Um, so that's starting to happen next week. Uh, all right. So we have here, we see going back, Loopback 101 right here has been changed. Right, has been created and let's see did it go through the third stage also and it did right so the third stage that post snapshot by ts hey uh jeff that's you the castle chat yes welcome to the stream glad to have you here and i was just telling people we're going to start using restream right next week be on the lookout we'll send out the messaging um and then also put the recording on twitch so that we you know keep the flow we already have like 14 episodes with this pipeline so it took us a bit of time but i'm super happy that we got it to work you've seen trouble me troubleshoot a bunch of stuff right which uh, it makes sense it's your first view of trying to get this to work from scratch right so uh hope you find it useful um all right so job has succeeded with the post snapshot tool and then you know as usual let's go back and verify that indeed we have our that loopback 101 here so if i do a show ip interface brief there we go loopback 101 right on switch one and then same thing that show ip interface brief 
loopback 101 on switch to also and then show IP router SPF. We see right here both loopback 100 and 101 the routes have been learned. Um, so that's pretty much it. Any other questions from folks? Uh, I see here who else do we have on? Uh, Alice, DDS, Kata, Jeff, uh, VL Mercy, VL Mercy, VI Mercy. Any questions from any of you folks about what we've worked on, the pipeline, how everything came together? Like I said, you can find the exact same content here on GitHub. So this would be for you accessible. Feel free to clone it, to pull requests if you want, if you modify something, if you want to have Terraform instead of Ansible as part of your stage, right? Would love to have you contribute here back. Um, if you want to use this as a starting point for your pipeline, we have all the components here, right? So just follow the videos. Um, and then as usual, if you have any, qu any questions, right, you can open uh, issues on this and ask me that way on in the GitHub repo. Just ask me, hey, you know, I'm running into this problem, create an issue. I'll have a look at it, reply, try to help you as much as I can. Um, if you configure BGP, right? You decide to create a playbook for configuring BGP and you want to share back to a pull request. Like I said, more than happy to have that configure BGP stage. Could be a, a state, uh, one of the stages, right? Um, and kind of have a bit of a readme here. Uh, recordings on Twitch and also YouTube, by the way, uh, on our Cisco DevNet YouTube channel, they'll be there. And um, like I said, we'll um, start using Restream starting next week. Uh, pipeline ran successfully. I showed you it's not just the one off from last week. Now that we have it running, we can perform all the changes that we want using the pipeline for OSPF on these devices. You have a bigger uh, network, more devices, you simply go ahead and you edit your host file, your host bars, right? Your hosts here, you add as many as you have and just build on top of what we already started here. Um, And that's pretty much all I had, I think, for this week. Um, be on the lookout for guests starting next week. So we'll have a surprise guest um, as our first one. Uh, I'll announce it. On, I'll put a, a message on LinkedIn uh, on who's it going to be. Our first guest and we'll, uh, we'll see what they're up to, what they're working on. Keep it conversational. Uh, also, if you have any questions, right, same thing for them as we go through and see what they're working on, code, where you can find their work, uh, where are they, where, what's their GitHub handle, right, how we can find them. Um, so that's coming up. And then if you have any questions for them, right, also come on over, join our conversation, ask the questions. Um, and yeah. We got it running. It took us a bit of a time for the CICD pipeline. It is, like I said, a bit of a heavy lift right at the beginning. But you saw how easy it is after that. Once you have your pipeline running, once you have all the components running, uh, it's just as easy as editing two YAML files or as many as your infrastructure is, right? as many as devices you want to configure, edit them. Git add, git commit, git push, automatically triggers the pipeline, the pipeline goes, goes through all the stages, 
pulls down the um, Docker image if it's not over, uh, already there, uh, starts the, the Git clone of your repo into that image, starts the components, runs the PyTS snapshot in our case, runs the Ansible playbook, runs the PyTS snapshot post change, making sure that routes are advertised and it's everything automated, right? Everything is nicely done, run in automated fashion. Uh, you can leave your pipeline running, right? If you have a large environment with lots of devices, start it, go grab a coffee, grab a drink, cup of water, come back. You'll see the change performed on two devices like we had in our case or thousands of devices within minutes, right? Instead of going to manually trying to update all your um, SNMP, right? Communities or the passwords for your communities or credentials or anything, any change that you're performing day in and day out. Configuring VLAN interfaces, bringing up new devices, RMAing devices, right? You're uh, replacing a device with a new one that's a broken one with, with uh, a working device. Uh, you're expanding your infrastructure. You're doing software upgrades, whatever the use case may be. I mean, these pipelines will be so beneficial and will help you automate your work tremendously. All right, so um, if there aren't any other questions, showed you how to bring everything together. Glad we got it working. Glad we actually ran into quite a bit of troubleshooting steps along the way because you got a chance to see firsthand on um, how to troubleshoot these things, right? Indentation on YAML, file extensions, NTP on CentOS, right? We also configured NTP and made sure that we have time is synced. So all of that, lots of good content here. Um, and be on the lookout for much more good to great content coming up. Uh, I'm looking forward to our next guest next week and using Restream and moving kind of from uh, from direct Twitch streaming to more platforms, trying to reach out more people. Um, and looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks everyone for joining. We'll wrap it up here this uh, today. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.